attention to what our leader said in the past. Mazen Ambicano said something very important in the past. And I will bring that to the screen as well. Once Super Abiyama says go home, you say no, he will bring in death. Before the Israelites left Egypt, he brought death. Be with every major exodus in life, there is death. If you don't want to be killed, you come back home to this very land that is holy. If you remain outside, when he says, paint your house with the red, the blood of an ox, so that the angel of death will pass over you. If you remain in the zoo, you are in Lagos, Abuja, Kano, you will die. You will be slaughtered. And I won't feel sorry for you. If you, if you like, let them kill my brother. I will not attend the burial. Because you we are warned something is going to happen here. Tukwokika Biyama is going to do something. He wants to show the whole world that he's the creator. Man is taking him for granted. He's very upset. And Biafra is the miracle he wants to, to perform in our time. To show the whole world you can never defeat them. Ask Israel. If they like, before they were saying, oh, uh, are you friendly with America? You need to be friendly with Britain or else we'll fail. You know that we had no supporters before and we lost. That is not the reason why you lost. You lost because you are worshipping idol. In That's why. You went to battle singing the name of an idol. You can never win. This time, we go with Chukwu Kikabiyama and you see how we win. Because of that is name, we will win. Fellow Biafrans, having listened to Mazen Amdikano a few years back, I would also want you to listen to the latest threat from the terrorists in the north against Biafra people. Someone there. You see this year where I write there, 2024, is very terrible for all Igbo people in Hausa land. That's why I put the, this uh, 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 sticker. Very soon, we are going to start from Kano. All the Igbo people from Kano will evacuate all of them back to their nonsense Biafra land. Even we know Tana, not is for no Tanas, Arewa is for Arewas. We don't need any Inyamuri Igbo. We don't need them again. We don't need you people. Pack. If you have house in Kano State, if you have any business, start the plan how you move your things to your land. Arewa is our fatherland. Arewa belongs to Arewa people. You are just open mouth that, 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 because of your, uh, because naibo people. Can't you have land? Go and make your business in your land now. Who send you to come to Yoruba land? Start doing business. Or who asks you to come north and start doing business? Yoruba on a small low. Don't worry. Next year you go see we the way, the whole youth of Arewa. You will see the way we go finish all the Igbo people. I'm telling you. January 9 we give them. All the Igbo people should evacuate to their land. Leave Arewa land. Arewa land is not your father land. Huh. Not is for northern land. Arewa is for Arewas. We don't need any Biafran person in our land. My fellow Biafrans, you've listened to the threat being issued by the Nigeria Islamic State sponsored terrorists. You know, their propaganda is that Biafrans are killing each other or killing themselves in the Southeast. But they have refused to tell you who are those killing Christians in the North. The number of deaths in the Northern Nigeria is 1,000 times higher than any part of Nigeria. Yet, their focus is on the Southeast. Having listened to the threat against the Afro people and having assessed the present threat across Nigeria, especially on the indigenous people of the Afro, the Biafra government, for this reason, in 2024, has 
focus on self-defense and we are taking our self-defense to the Nigeria terrorist army barracks, army bases, checkpoints, stations, and the anywhere they are. After that, within this 2024, we will proceed to government houses. And we are putting a stop to the exploitation of our natural resources from Biafra land until those exploiting our natural resources recognizes Biafra government as the only legitimate government or they have a choice of leaving our territory because it can never be safe for them in 2024. We are making this offer and demand which we believe to be just and fair. In 2024, the Biafra government have also assessed this threat against Biafras across Nigeria and of course the Islamic State of Nigeria and sequence to this development. I am officially announcing today the opening of the Biafra Liberation Army Base in the Southwest in accordance with our Yoruba Nation Alliance. And also, we wish to solidify the Biafra Liberation Army Base in the Middle Belt. We will fight Nigeria from all fronts. This has become necessary following the threat against Biafras. We are not going to intervene at this point when only their businesses are being destroyed, but we will sweep into action swiftly, immediately there is any physical attack against any Biafra in the Southwest and of course in the North. So we are taking the threat against our lives very seriously. And for that reason, we need a lot, in accordance with the alliances of the Biafra government, we are announcing on this day, the first day of January 2024, the opening of Biafra Liberation Army Base in the Southwest. This is to make sure that there will be consequences if we wake up any day and their friends are being massacred like in the past. The consequences of this will be grave. So for that reason, Biafra needed to have the presence of his military in all these neighboring countries or nation, as we may call it from today. My fellow Biafrans, in the face of challenges, let resilience guide our path in 2024. As we are in the new year, let us reaffirm our commitment to the principle that define us as people. Unity, justice, and unwavering determination. Together, we can overcome the adversity and build a brighter future for Biafra. My fellow Biafrans, may this year bring renewed hope and progress toward our goals as we navigate the complexity of our exile let us stand very firm in our conviction that a free and sovereign state of Biafra is not just a dream, but a destiny that has become accomplished. In the spirit of unity, let us continue to foster strong bond within our diasporas and homeland, reaching across borders to amplify our voices and advocate for the right of our people. Together, we are a force that can never be ignored or destroyed. Our force is a force to be reckoned with. As we bid farewell to the old year and embrace this new year, 2024, let it be a time of reflection, growth, and a strengthened resolve this new year is certainly the year of Trump, where the current reality of a free Biafra 
will continue to manifest on this on behalf of the Biafra. Stefan Oba has reacted to the suspension of the traditional ruler of Neni, a community in an ultra local government area of Anambra State. A suspension letter by Anambra State Commissioner for Local Government and Chief Matters Tony Collins Mwabwane accused His Royal Highness Igwe Demian Ezani of not seeking clearance from the state government before bestowing titles on people, including persons with questionable character. The monarch had, during the Yulitide, conferred on Senator Oba the title of Odenjinji of Neni, which is similar to the title of Soludo, also holds in his Isuofia community. In his reaction, Oba, who spoke with Daily Post in a phone interview, said, The entire game is all about politics. Soludo is frustrating my rising. Frustrated by my rising popularity, I am not the only person to receive a chieftaincy title. Former chief of army staff, Borotai, was honored within the same period. Vice President Kashi Shetima was also honored. Mr. President was honored in absentia, why in my own difference. Oba added, the governor is frustrated by my acceptance and popularity. He is jittery about the next governorship election, but I leave him to his conscience. Oba, in October 2023, defected from the Young Progressive Party YPP to the All Progressive Congress APC. He was later received into the party in December alongside another popular grassroots politician, Senator Uche Okunife. This action set off an alarm about a possible alliance between the two to unseat Saludo in the 2025 governorship election. This may have sparked some emotions among members of the ruling all progressive Grand Ireland's Apuga and the state government. Anambra is one of the states that holds off season's election. This governorship election will be due in 2025. Uh, my people, when I don't see as it they happen, as it they shall, uh, one government trying to manage you, you don't enter people's hand, uh, they don't they use them, um, they fight themselves. Uh, but as it be, you know that as it be, where it never be before, Bianca Ojuku raises alarm, says FG, state government implementing grant, grant, grant plots against Igbos. The widow of the late Igbo leader, Odumegu Ojuku, Bianca Ojuku, has alleged that the federal and some state governments were frustrating the Igbo in their various businesses in part of the country. Ojuku, who spoke on the heels of the demolition of property and business places owned by the Igbo in Lagos State, said there had been a decades-old grand scheme and conspiracy to isolate the Igbos from mainstream of Nigeria affairs, particularly in the governance of the country. The former Nigerian ambassador to Spain said the Igbo are excluded, citing sensitive federal government projects and infrastructure. Igbo youths are marginalized in employment schemes in federal ministries, departments and agencies, as well as in the admission policies of federal universities. Notwithstanding, she urged Igbo youth to remain creative, continue to be hardworking and diligent, pursue education with uncommon zeal, and shun crimes and social vices. She also lamented Nigeria's economic, social, political security and judicial instability. She said the country has become extremely difficult to live in and dangerous economically, social, politically, and regarding security and judicial flux. Her words, Nigerians have long ceased to look up to their government for solid policies and programs, actions and decisions that will change their fortune and build a great nation, rather, they have come to accept their government as opportunistic platforms. For the leaders' enrichment of themselves, their families, and for parochial sectional agenda. Hence, why those in government live in scandalous luxury the Nigerian masses have been choked to bear existence by hostile economic and social situations. 
as the incapacitation of our sexy government has degenerated to a level, it can neither provide enough for Nigerians as present nor secure the future of Nigeria, which is the country sealed. In addition to the harsh economic realities briefly mentioned above, Nigeria is also a country bedeviled by all manner of evils and societal ill which the government has proved impotent to control, such as extreme insecurity banditry, cultism, kidnapping, rituals, killing, human and organ trafficking, dishonesty, etc. Indeed, indeed, the generated nature and levels of the nation ill are so horrifying that any manner of evil one does not see in Nigeria may possibly not exist anywhere else in the world. Uh, when I don't see as it happen and where Nigeria don't reach, as it be a spot and uh, uh, good, good. Uh, DSTV sports have said that they are not going to televi televise the AFCOM uh, that is currently coming on, uh, but NTA uh, is going to broadcast it live. And I am wondering, uh, according to them, they say that uh, there are some money that uh, CAF is supposed to pay to them and that money has not been paid to them and as it is, they are not going to televise uh, that particular tournament and which is very bad. Uh, I think that AFCOM should be a, a tournament that should be televised all over the world so that um, even uh, the, the, the African players will be able to have opportunity. I don't know why they are doing that, whether it's football politics, because as it is, there is politics everywhere. Even though uh, the, the, the European clubs are rejecting Africans now uh, because of when the AFCOM is falling into, and they are saying that Africans should change their season and date of AFCOM, and I wonder uh, why that decision is supposed to be so. JTF dialogue, IPOB, ESN camp in Imo recovers arm and ammunition as it is a joint, task, a joint team force dislodged IPOB slash ESN camp in Imo uh, recovers ammunition. Uh, this one at the NIG police, then they give this report as it be, you know, say. Um, Anybody where they catch for Nigeria now, uh, they waiting they go title the person be say <laughs> now IPOB or ESN, especially for the southeastern part of Nigeria. And for me, I will say let there be a proper investigation into whosoever they catch in order not to be denting the name of the indigenous people of Biafra. Let's leave politics and face reality. I see there be rivers, party spokesperson react to react as NYCN chairman alleged LP won all elections. <laughs> and they don't they talk for River State, say the election will be said they win that title, they say that LP win them. The Labour Party in River State has reacted to the claims by the factional River State chairman of the National Youth Council of Nigeria, Chijoke Ihumo, that he and some un unnamed persons wrote election results in favor of People's Democratic Party. PDP candidates in the 2023 general elections. Hmm. In a video trending on X, formerly known as Twitter, Ihumwo had claimed on Saturday that the embattled speaker of River State House of Assembly, Martins Amawule, member representing Obi Akpo Federal Constituency in the House Representative, Okechinda, as well as other candidates of the PDP, did not win their elections. According to the NYSE State Chairman, the Labour Party won squarely in River State. The Labour Party, in its reaction to Inwo's claim, said the recent revelation confirmed that it undoubtedly won the election in the state. The Publicity Secretary of LP in River State, Bogo Wellington, believed more truth will be revealed. This is to a large extent goes to confirm what we have been saying since the conclusive of the 2023 presidential election and gubernatorial election. A Labour Party undoubtedly won the election here in River State. Uh, no matter where they rise up, no matter where they rise up, but I will bring you the full detail of the information as it be. And if this is your first time of joining us on this wonderful channel, go ahead and subscribe, like, comment, share. Thank you for listening. God bless you.